going on? It's your boy Low Key. You know, from Columbia, South Carolina. Rocking with your boy, my boy DME TV. And let's kick this thing off. Low Key, what's been good, man? Ain't nothing much. Chilling, chilling, working, grinding. Word. Usual. Yeah, yeah. Good. Good to have you in the building, though, man. Oh, shit. Thanks for having me. Yeah, been a minute. Sorry you had to cook out, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. about a month ago, almost about a month ago. Yeah, I was in a little situation right there. Yeah, big facts, man. Yeah. You know, uh, CEO, you know, said Tatiana, that's my, that's my dog, you know what I'm saying? We got a. That's my right hand. Yeah, so we got a good, pretty good relationship, you know without, what I'm saying? Without so, her, a lot, a lot of things I do were impossible. Word, right, man. So you got a, you got a good manager. Before yeah. I met her, it was sluggish. Yeah. And ever since I met her, it's just been. Been moving fast yeah. pace. Yeah, 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 most definitely, man. So he's dropping a new single, man. Let's let's talk about this man, single. Lie. Let's What's get into it. Lie stands for loyalty is everything. You know, a lot of people lack loyalty. A lot of people don't know the real meaning of loyalty. And loyalty can be anything. Relationships, mm -hmm. with your homeboys or whatever. So and it's it's kind of like a the title kind of contradicts the song because Lie spells lie. And, you know, lying ain't loyal. So it kind of, it kind, it's kind of creative, in my perspective. But yeah, it's really a song about loyalty. You know, switching up on your team and staying with one team, man. Grinding with that one team instead of trying to go to the boys who are already winning. You know, D ride and all that. Like, you grind with that one team, y'all build up to the top. It's gonna be a bond forever. And you know, produced by Casio. That's my other, that's my other right here. So that's a dope track. Okay. I mean, so how did you come up with that concept, man? Like when, when you when, when you heard the beat, like how did you come up with the concept to the song, or you already had it written? Well, I I don't know. Like I was just Casio sent me the beat. I was like, I think I got one for you, and I was like, where are we sending over? So you know, I got the email, and I get the email. And I'm, I'm sitting in the car listening. I listen to all my beats in the car. Like I don't care for headphones. I, I like to hear the car, cause that's where like majority of people gonna play your music at in the car. Right. So you know. I'm listening, like, man, this is a beat ride. So I'm telling myself, like, I got something for this. And then, all my music comes from things I go through. So anything I go through, that's where my music comes from. So all my music is pure and true. So at the time, you know, you're dealing with fake homeboys. Little right, reality, reality music. Yeah, I got right. reality. So, I mean, it just hit me. And then in my head, I was like, loyalty is everything. And I wrote it on my, I write all my music in my notepad. And I was looking at it, and I was like, the first three letters of each, first letter of each word spells out lie. I said, that's kind of crazy. So we're going to call it L-I-E. And that's how that came about. Okay. So when, when you got in the booth, man, and, 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 and you, you did your thing, how did you feel when it came out? Did it, did it come out like how you wanted it to come out? Oh, well, it came out better. Okay. Because like I, all my songs I write, they sound good to me in my notepad. So I know when I put it on the beat, it's gonna sound better, cause I can, you know, I can hear it and figure out what what can I do better. I listen to a song for like a month until we put it out, and we we'll, we we'll sit on it, and listen, and in the booth we just like after the first verse, I was just like, yeah, that's it, cause I always do my hooks first, so I know like how my verse gonna come in and how the rest of the song gonna play out. So after that hook, that first verse, I was like, okay, this is hard. And most of the time, my second verse gonna come harder than my first verse, just cause I'm already in that vibe and I'm already flowing. It's like a train. You ain't gonna stop the brakes on the train like that. Right. You gotta slow it down. Right. So once that ball rolling, I just I just keep flowing. So after that first verse, it was just, it was like hammer down. Okay. I wanna go back to something, man. You said that before you got what Jackson Brand Management, that you know things weren't moving. Oh, yeah, man. It was moving slow. It wasn't moving right. It wasn't feel like it wasn't moving in the right direction. Right. Tell me, tell me some of the things that you wasn't doing before you got with JBM and now. Well, uh, like I had no direction. I was just I was just throw a song on SoundCloud. No, no promotion. No DJs behind it. Like I didn't understand that concept because I was new. Like I only been making music for like a year and a half, almost two years. Okay. So I'm still fresh at it. So. Many of, the, many of the things I'm doing now, I'm still learning. Like most of the stuff I do is new to me. So everything was new, and I, I just didn't know. I didn't know what to do in certain situations. So I would drop a song only on SoundCloud. It wasn't no Spotify. It wasn't no iTunes. None of that. And the shows I was getting, 
it was like I was trying to shoot for the stars to get more of a bigger crowd instead of starting from the bottom and working my way up. That's one thing TJ taught me. Like, when you're making music, you're not just going to jump to Billboard. So right. You got to start on the street. So. Right. So. It's a process. Yeah. So right. It's a, it's a big that. process. I was lost and she taught me how to network. I had no networking skills. Like, okay. I was just. Like, That's dumb. a big thing. Yeah. Okay. And as far as networking, like what are you doing now as far as network? Kind of give us like some of the things you have done. Uh, like, like most people will get like a DJ contact and they expect the DJ to hit them up. Right. But like DJ talking, like you follow up with DJ, hit them up every day, gain a relationship with them. You know what I'm saying? Work, right. work a relationship out. So then it becomes deeper than the music. So right. one day, you know, they'll just be like, hey. You know, I done threw your song on this such and such such. Not saying that we want handouts or nothing, but that's how relationships work. I right. scratch your back, you scratch mine. Right. Uh, following up, as in like reaching out to certain people, uh, sending your music out. You know what I'm saying? You just got, you just can't be shy with it. Like most people, scared of face to face interactions. That was new to me. I had to do that. Um, it's just really, it's all about communication. Definitely, definitely, yeah. definitely. So I see you, uh, you you on the new music Wednesday with Coalition DJ. How how's that been working out for you? Oh, it's good. That lot of feedback is crucial. Right. Cause like nine times ten, like when I first did it, they didn't know me at all. So they could have told me your music trash. Like, yeah. Just because they got a bad vibe from me or they didn't like where I'm from. But you know, being with them, it shows you that not only your team likes your music, and they hearing your music for the first time. And you're getting that live feedback right in your face. Okay. So that, that's crucial to you. So when they give you them thumbs up, you know, it boosts your confidence a little bit. Right. Okay. And well, and and what's what's your next date on on uh, the New Music Wednesdays? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. Nineteen. We gonna be in Charleston. Okay. Yeah, we are gonna be in Charleston. Um, and we got two more dates, if I'm not mistaken. I know it ends in Greenville, which is on the 29th. Okay. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong though. Okay. What what what's your goals, man? In this, in this music business, what are, what what goals do you have? Let's let's talk, let's say another year from now, then another five years from now. What are your goals? Another year from now, I expect like my name to be one of the talked about. Being that you know when they when they make that list for the top South Carolina artists, I want to be top five. Right. If not top one. Right. See top if twenty. You if you ain't first, you losing. Yeah. So that, uh, I want my own buzz, like no cosigns. That's my year goal. Okay. My five year goal, you know, that's labels, endorsements. Uh, not, you know, I put a put a face on my city. And not just because I rap. Right. Start organizations, like. So I, I'm, I'm a give back type of dude. Okay. So I, I want to be rich and wealthy like, like that too, but I also want my city to recognize me, not just as a rapper, but as a, a caretaker type thing. Okay. Like, it's a lot of homeless people on the street. I don't like to see stuff like that. Yeah. I'm not saying it. Some of it's they fault, but still, I don't mean, you know, because it could have been one mistake they made that got them there. Right. So everybody, everybody deserves a reset button. So I'm definitely. that type of guy. Yeah. Some of them kids. So. Yeah. Exactly. That's definitely a sad thing to see. So that's my five year goal. I have like five, ten organizations out there giving back, back to schools putting kids in homes, all that stuff right there. Okay, yeah. okay, most definitely, man. So um, kind of, let's talk about who were some of the artists that inspired you coming up. Coming up, I like Drake, mm -hmm. Lucci. I'm a big, um, I'm a big Lucci fan. Okay. Because he tells stories. Okay. That's why I'm enjoying my music, it's true. Right. True stories. Like, I ain't with all that. I could talk the biggest gun, or I could shoot the most people, or I got the most dope or money. I don't care about stuff like that. Cause that's why you get tried in the streets. Yeah. Cause where I'm from, you talk the game, you got you got act it out. Like, you got you got be about it. Um, shoot, I like older artists though. I listen to a lot of older R and B. Okay. Like D'Angelo and Maxwell. Okay. Kim. But I don't know. I just feel like I can't make R&B music, but that it inspires me because you know you want to you want to have that diversity. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and definitely like older people like Biggie, you know, 
Rakim, all them boys back in the day, Mob Deep, all them. Cause you gotta know your history. Definitely, definitely. And that's important, man. A lot of artists, um, I think a lot, especially the younger generations come out, they don't. They just, yeah. know, they just know the pumps and the yeah. pussies. Uh, they yeah, they just know the artists now. They don't go back and receive. Yeah. I got to know your history. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of artists came up when I was coming through, and that's what I listened to. And even a lot of older artists, they don't <coughs> like newer the newer artists. But like I had a conversation with somebody saying that, you know, sometimes you got to sit them down, man. Listen, you need to study this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It could help you. You yeah. could see something, could get some inspiration. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these new artists on it, like that crazy stuff, all the hair and all that. Yeah. Busta Rhymes been on that stuff. Yeah, this, that stuff, that stuff is it, it's it, it's it's coming back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's but coming it, back, but it ain't new. It is. It's not new. You know what I'm saying? A lot of artists. See, that's just new. Like, oh, he tripping, but y'all don't realize. Like, nah. People. You got Busta Rhymes back in the day. Eminem was crazy back in the day. You know what I'm like, you got all these crazy artists that, but y'all only see the new artists who doing the crazy stuff because y'all don't know y'all history. Exactly. Exactly. Definitely. So tell everybody where you're from, man. Uh, I'm from Columbia. And if you dig deeper in Columbia, I'm from 48. Okay. Everybody know about it. Okay. Um, 48 is just... It's either you make it or you don't. It's all love down there. I mean, it's, it got like a little bad reputation, but... If you're if you, if you, if you from there, you know, like... We don't bother nobody who don't bother us. Now, that's not no gang type, no gang. Yeah, 48 is more like a family. We, we don't promote violence. A lot of people see it like they promote violence down there. Everybody down there is not violent. Everybody down there ain't a shooter. Everybody down there not a drug dealer. You know, it's, it's different people down there for different reasons. Right. And that's any neighborhood. But yeah. it's really all love. We show love to everybody. We love the elderly. Like, we look out for them. And we just, majority, we just like to come together. And we look out for each other. Okay, okay. It's all about that loyalty. 